Good evening with Miguel Noche. These are irresolvable conclusions. We have a solar energy market that is photovoltaic and that has been dropping in price for a long time, which is fantastic so that anyone can now aspire to install their own self-consumption installation. But how nice it would be if we could go one step further in terms of cell performance. Conclusiones irresolutibles con Miguel Noche. Well, yes, we have spent years and years in which solar energy, uh, specifically photovoltaics, is falling in price, and it does not seem to have a floor, which we are happy about because the truth is that right now you go into an urbanization of chalets, and you see that everyone has panels, the famous solar panels, but not only that, you even see them now in neighborhood communities. Where can you also find those panels, even in any type of business market? Let's say that they are proliferating because they are already priced, And at this moment, it could be said that solar energy is booming, photovoltaics, good, this is good. Without, however, there is a pending aspect that has not yet improved. Let's say that this performance has been somewhat monotonous for years and years. It has not just risen, it does not pass that 20-22%, but then the laboratory is 25, but on 24th Street. Well, don't worry, it is not that it is bad, because in the end you do get to amortize that investment. But the nice thing would be to do it before having more performance to be able to put those panels on a roof of a community and have them for all the neighbors, and this would be achieved with more powerful panels that they would deliver more energy in the same collection space. And that's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Eh? And there is a technology that is promising to reach this growth in performance. And the truth is that it would be a growth that if we have said silicon is working around 24-25 in the laboratory, because logically it has a ceiling that is below 30%, so it can't go up anymore. We have to do different things, and the promising technology to add that extra performance that pushed that photovoltaics needs is in the hands of the perovskite. The perovskite, we remember that they were crystallized materials and that as a layer, they could be added to those layers of silicon, and what it would do would be an addition and continuation of the spectrum that is being captured by that sheet of silicon, that is the wafer, the wafer, the photovoltaic cell. Well, in, in this case, if we add other layers of those perobe removed from other segments of the electromagnetic spectrum to the silicon that already has a performance lower than that 29, then we would add up and they tell us that we could even reach 40% of performance, which, my friend, we would already have some important cells there some cells of the future. Well, this is where perovskite is, and it is the technology called to make this evolution, this evolutionary leap within photovoltaics, but it has been years and years, and this leap does not occur. Why does this leap not occur? Well, it happens that perovskite does have a lot of performance, but it does happen. That degrades upon contact with oxygen, upon contact with humidity, upon contact with light, but well, it is a material that degrades upon contact with light in a photovoltaic cell, This is like the one who said hello, is your father home, and says yes, but he is drunk as if he were not there. Well, that's the thing, and if we have a material that is going to perform much better in the face of photonic uptake, but degrades in the face of photonic uptake, well, how do you eat this? Maybe it occurred to you to say encapsulation. They are encapsulated from the beginning and still degrade. That is the pending issue they have. If we were able to solve this, we would have it, but it has to be solved it. I already told you this, I mean you have to capture light and you degrade with the light, it is very difficult so. If it is so difficult, on the other hand, we have several issues, one of them is that in ten years from now the Perovskite market, uh, it will be revaluating quite a bit. There are numbers out there where the Peroquist market is really going on a real rise, as if it were taken for granted that it will end up working. But in today's program I wanted to touch on something else, because it happens that there is a company that manufactures these cells, but removes them from high-performance cubic PV is called. And it also turns out that this company, Cubic PV, is one of Bill Gates's investment assets. So, of course, when Bill Gates is behind this, well, something makes you wonder what's going on here. Not because Gates is one of these people who we usually say doesn't usually give a damn without thread. And there we have it. There we have investing in this type of perovskite technology so that you consider that this issue of the perovskite silicon cell does not really have a future. And then you go to these two aspects. On the one hand, I already say a forecast 10 years from now that the market value will multiply. And on the other hand, an investor of the caliber of Bill Gates. And once this person enters the scene, well, several questions occur to me because I remember when I was involved in another project that I had in hand. 
and it was neither more nor less than covering the sun, if not literally, well, of course, yes, with certain gases, with a certain layer that would ultimately attenuate it. And I remember that when we touched on this topic, I considered here and I said, if, for example, maybe the photovoltaic market was going to have a hard time, because maybe it turns out that when the sun dims with that fog that it tried to interpose between the sun and us, well, maybe it turns out that this attenuation makes the performance of solar energy declines. Well, then from here the first question would arise, given that the person who intended to block the sun now turns out to be investing in photovoltaics. The first question that would arise would be that it is not going to dim the performance of photovoltaics, but a second version appears as well, and maybe I could say I invest in what I want, and the first thing that flourishes, then I withdraw from the other. That is, if it comes to eclipse the sun, because I withdraw the investment of the photovoltaic, if the photovoltaic thing comes out, I put the thing about the sun eclipsed in a draw. For example, it could be. But there could also be a third issue, is that perhaps he was older and would not have realized, and he says, come on, if I had another project which was to block the sun, and this, it will attenuate the performance of the photovoltaic cell. I don't think that's it, but in any case, there we have something that makes us think. Why a person of this caliber, at least at the investment level, has gotten into the photovoltaic market, but it could be that we end up seeing a push in the end within this market because that is what is being said. No, I don't know. However, it will be one of those things that we will continue to look at here with a magnifying glass as we usually do. As usual, I invite you to leave your opinion below, uh, by the way. And speaking of photovoltaics, if you have considered installing an installation, you already know that we can request a quote, or even if you cannot install it due to space issues, you can always invest in that renewable energy, which amounts to the same thing because it would end up being deducted from the bill. The light I leave my email below in case you want us to request that quote. I also tell you that if you have just arrived at this channel, do not subscribe or subscribe at the end. The last word is yours. Good night with Miguel Knight.